Okay, geeks, when I'm network troubleshooting, I always start with ping and traceroute. Sure, these tools are ancient, but they have their uses, even in today's fancy modern networks. But what do their numbers mean? Well, let me tell you, numbers are relative. Looking like you're 65 is great when you're actually 80, but I digress. If you want to understand the numbers behind ping and traceroute, here's some advice for you. Invest your valuable time watching this video. Because one day, when you're older, you'll wish you had watched a lot more network troubleshooting videos. You know who else watches a lot of network troubleshooting videos? My co-host, Sean. That's what he does on his Saturday evenings. Hit it, Sean. My Saturday nights are pretty cool, thanks very much, Betty. Maybe there's the occasional network troubleshooting video, but still cool. However, we're not here to talk about my YouTube viewing habits. We're here to talk about basic network troubleshooting. Someone walks into your office at four o'clock on Friday evening and says, I can't reach the host. What do you do? You probably start with a ping and you follow that up with a trace route. Both tools are easy to use, available on multiple platforms, and their results are mostly understandable. Mostly. We'll start with ping. Back in the computing dark ages, a guy with a lot of U's and S's in his name, Mike Muse wrote what he called the thousand line hack. It was called ping, named after the sonar ping, and it was later backronymed, which is a thing, to mean packet internet groper. Why? At any rate, it has become one of the most ubiquitous tools in computing. Simply ping the server or device to see its latency and whether or not any packets were dropped along the way. So what does ping tell us? Well, as I just said, you can learn the latency, between your machine and a specific host, and you can see whether any packets were dropped. No response, then the host might be down, or there is a problem on the way to the host. Try a trace route. More on this later. Also, bonus tip, if you ping the host name and don't get a response, try the IP address. If you get a response for the IP address, it means that there's a problem with resolving the name for the server. That means you might have a misconfigured DNS server somewhere. High ping times, you might have an overloaded router, high traffic on the network, or insufficient bandwidth. But what exactly is too high? Well, that's not such an easy question to answer because it depends on a number of things such as where the host is located, your connection to the host, and other things. But you'll probably have a good feel for what is normal. What if your ping result shows varying ping times? You might have a problem on the way to the host. Again, try a trace route. Or does the ping show packet loss? Then you might have link congestion or a device that can't handle the throughput. Again, you guessed it, try a trace route. A single ping is fine if you want to know if there is a problem, but what if you want to know when a server or a device is down? Or you're making changes and you want to know exactly when a host becomes unavailable. Then you can keep pinging. For example, on Windows, you can use the minus T option to continuously ping a host. There are similar options on other platforms, but ping is only useful to tell if there is a problem. As we've already mentioned before, if you want to know where a problem lies, it's time for traceroute. Most platforms offer traceroute as a tool. Traceroute traces the route between two points in a network. To get from one point to another, data has to travel through a series of devices or hops, such as servers or routers. Traceroute measures the round trip time from your machine to each hop along the way. In case it matters to you, Windows environments use ICMP echo requests to do this, while Unix-like environments use UDP packets. At this point, I tell you a UDP joke, but I'm not sure you get it. So what do you get from a trace route? You get three RTT values because three probes are sent to each hop. You also can get, if it's available, the IP address and the device name for each hop. So how to interpret the results? Here's some tips. When a trace route times out and never recovers, you found your problem hop. The bad news is, this is very rarely the case. Most of the time, you're gonna have to get your Sherlock hat on and deduce things. When you see a high RTT value, your knee-jerk reaction might be to think that you found the problem. But high values on their own don't necessarily indicate a problem. This is why you should rather... Most network problems only become apparent when considering trends across the entire result set. Generally speaking, Traceroute shows you the consistency of the latency across a path between two points in the network. It's breaks in this latency consistency that you should look out for. But what could these breaks be? 
A common indication of a problem is when the RTT values get abnormally high and continue getting higher as the hops get closer to the target device. When this is the case, you would need to start your troubleshooting at the hops where the RTT values became abnormally high. Patterns where early hops might have higher RTT values than later hops might mean that there's a problem in your local network. You also need to keep in mind that some patterns don't necessarily indicate problems, such as when RTT values become higher in the middle of a trace route, but then remain more or less constant after that. A trace route can show you the IP address of a specific hop, and in some cases, the DNS name. This can be invaluable to helping you understand the path that your data is taken through the network. For example, geographic locations of some of the stops along the way. And there you have it. Ping and Traceroute are easy to use, but in today's modern networks, their usage is somewhat limited. But still, they're a good starting point for network troubleshooting. Betty, any closing remarks? I don't hold back with my valuable wisdom because obviously I'm not paid just for being old. So, from someone who's already survived husband number three, do you know what would be an even better investment of your time than watching videos about network troubleshooting? Watching all of our videos. It's actually quite simple because you can simply subscribe to us. Do it by clicking here. <laughs>